Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on geography and its various aspects. So in today's session on biogeography, we are going to learn about a very interesting concept of gene pool. So what is this gene? What is this gene pool and what are the various centers of origin that is called gene pool centers on the earth and who were the people who talked about it in their theories. So we are going to discuss it all here but before we go ahead don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now let's understand about this concept of gene pool centers which is the last part of biogeography and the UPSC syllabus if you see in the geography optional. So what is this gene pool? What is this gene itself and what are these various gene pool centers that are important in biogeography? So first concept, let's understand what is this gene. So this gene is basic physical unit of inheritance. Now remember, it is talking about inheriting something from one generation to the other generation, the important information, the codes, right? Those things, the traits that we say, this is being inherited from a father, right? A mother to a child. So that's what we observe. So it is coming through genetic transfer. So gene is the basic physical unit in that way. And genes are passed from parents to offspring and contain information need to specify traits as we know, right? So genes are arranged one after the other on structures called something which is chromosomes. So what is this chromosome? It is a structured arrangement of this particular gene and chromosome contains a single long DNA molecule, right? Deoxyribonucleic acid as we know and only a portion of these corresponds to single gene. So humans have approximately 20,000 genes arranged on their chromosomes. That is important to remember. So this is about genes. But what about gene pool? So gene pool is what? The word itself is pool. It means collection, right? Where there is a pool, there is a collection. So the sum of population's genetic material at a given time is called its gene pool. So when there is a given population in that particular time framework, its particular collection of all the genes is supposed to be under one gene pool. So gene pool is the collection of different genes within an interbreeding population. The population that is producing children in themselves by interbreeding, they have a separate gene pool. That's important to understand. So the term typically is used to refer to a population made up of individuals of same species. Different species means different gene pool. It has to be of same species for one common gene pool and it includes all the genes of that particular population that is important to remember. So this is the concept of gene and gene pool. Now when we are talking in this in biogeography, what does it mean? Where are we looking into? So it represents the complete genetic diversity. Now remember under biodiversity, if you observe, we have three levels of diversity. It starts with genetic diversity, it goes to the population diversity and then it further goes to the ecosystem diversity, right? So genetic diversity, if you observe species diversity and then ecosystem diversity. So all these scales of diversity are important and it all starts with gene pool itself, right? So genetic diversity is where we are concerned when we are talking about the major gene pool, right? So there are certain areas or locations in the world where you have particular gene pool centers from where those species came out and went out to the world, right? So which are these important centers that is important to learn? So gene pool centers refer to areas on earth where important crop plants and domestic animals originated. This is about genesis, right? So genetically we have to see that where what originated. That's important to understand. So they have extraordinary range of wild counterparts of cultivated plant species. And remember, there are many species which are useful to everybody in today's world, which have come from some other place, right? So gene pool centers also contain subtropical temperate region species, tropical plants, all these things are there part of major gene pools, right? So now let's learn about it in some details. So if you look at this particular gentleman, Alfonso de Candol, so he was one of the persons who first actually identified geographic origin of cultivated plants right in 1855 itself. So remember, a large gene pool indicates extensive genetic diversity and low genetic diversity can be 
the cause reduced biological fitness and increased chance of extinction so remember if it is low on gene pool it means it has a chance of extinction in future so bigger gene pool better chance of survival right survival of the fittest from all the things right so many authorities believe that center of origin are also centers of diversity at the same time that's important to remember and after kendall this particular idea remember in 1859 darwin came and he revolutionized this particular thought process based on evolutionary concept of darwin and taking findings of kendall as points of departure like where from it originated and it departed russian scientist remember vavilov right the last name so nikolay ivanovich vavilov he was one of the major prominent scholar who developed his hypothesis on the origin of these cultivated plants the centers of origin that's where it is important to remember in early 1920s it's about only 100 years old concept so that's very important to remember then let's learn about what vavilov did and who was he so nikolay ivanovich vavilov was a prominent russian and soviet agronomist botanist and geneticist best known for having identified the centers of origin of cultivated plants across the world so this gentleman being a botanist has something to do with biogeography because he's talking about locations he's talking about distributions he's talking about world map right that's why we are studying this in geography so a center of origin or center of diversity as he defined as a geographical area where a group of organisms either domesticated or wild remember this point it's not just about domesticated but also wild at the same time first develops its distinctive traits or properties that part is center of origin right and they are also considered as centers of diversity according to vavilov so centers of origin were first identified all the way in 1924 by vavilov and remember it's the same year when you see penck's book being written right so that's important that penck published his concept in 1924 apart from him remember emmanuel de morton the student of vidal de lablache published principles of human geography and also in 1924 in india first geography department was established at aligarh muslim university so 1924 is a very interesting year you'll find so many uh, things coming in up in 1924 even isostasis uh, even isostasis theory of jolly came in 1924 right so this was the time when lots of sciences were being talked about developed all around the world one of them was the center of origin so by vavilov that's important to remember so now you can remember 1924 as an important year right then vavilov gene pool centers are what we are going to learn in details so vavilov assumed that most of the main agricultural species could be traced back to one particular region where they origin as their center of origin so he started this research and started tracing back the gene pool that where this species is coming from so one of the first vavilov's finding was that it was possible to distinguish between primary and secondary groups of cultivated plants so he divided the cultivated plants into two groups and then primary crops were the basic ancient cultivated plants they were known to humanity only in their cultivated state it means they were fixed in particular situation in their particular state right so they were wheat barley rice soybean flax and cotton right so these were considered as the primary crops then secondary crops comprised of all those plants that were derived from the weed that infested the primary crop field and they were coming from external sources they were found useful right rye oats false flax and so many others so this is the first demarcation that was drawn by vavilov in terms of their center of origin right and then within the centers of origin vavilov determined so called foci of typical formation of most important cultivated plants which he also called a heart of the centers not just centers of origin but heart of the centers is one important phrase that he used with regard to genetic diversification and types that's important so if there is a question on discuss about hearts of the center what is this hearts of the center about is the origin centers of these particular plant species cultivated species right so where's vavilov's principles were strengthened throughout the period of empirical investigation remember this empirical investigation is through direct observations so the numbers and borders of central of origin of cultivated plants changed continuously so what happened in the end he suggested that the following centers of origin of cultivated plants exist right so in 1924 he said it was three gradually he kept researching 
and he brought it to five centers in 1926. Then furthermore, he researched. He added one more in 1929. In 1931, it became seven. In 35, it became eight. And again, it reduced to seven when he finally put his research to the end in 1940. So you look into this idea of about 20 years of work by Vavilov, and then finally he talked about these major seven. gene pool centers or the centers of origin or heart of the centers of these cultivated plants that are important so now to learn it it's important to understand geographically in map right so look into this map vavilov centers of origin now here are the numbers 1 2 2a 2b and then you have 3 4 5 6 7 and also 8 and also there is 7 and 7a so what is this look into this particular indexing So one is Mexico Guatemala area, two is Peru Ecuador, right? This particular area. Then two A is Southern Chile area. Then you have Paraguay Southern Brazil, two B, right? This particular area. Then you have Mediterranean region, this one, the Northern Mediterranean. Then you have Middle East, the number four, this particular center, right? These Mesopotamian civilizations, as we see. Ethiopia is number five. Remember Africa part. Then you have the sixth one that is Central Asia, Indo Burma. Right, so this particular area. Then you have this particular area of seven A, Siam and Malay Java. So seven A, the Southeast Asian part, and then you have China and Korean part. That is number eight, right? And then seventh is the entire Indian subcontinent itself. So this is where on map you need to draw it and practice these Vavilov centers of origin. That's important in gene pool centers here. Then. If you want a list, here is the major gene pool centers and their particular time period. So this is a list. You can pause the video here and you can note it down for yourself. The Mediterranean gene pool center existed around 4000 before Christ. Then you have Southern American gene pool center. It dates about 7000 to 3000 BC. Southwest and Middle East dates about 8000 to 6000 BC. African gene pool center about 5000 before Christ. South American and Central American area 3500 BC. Indian gene pool center is further into Indus and South Asian part, right? And this is from 3500 BC onwards. And then Central Asia gene pool center, 4000 BC to 3000 BC, and East Asia again 6000 to 5000. So more or less you find right from the oldest, if you observe 8000, to largely mostly to 3000. This is the range where your major gene pool centers existed, and from where all those cultivated plants went across the world through traders, right? So that is important through traders, through wars, through conquests, through expansions, right? This is how they traveled with people, right? So that is important that you must understand all these gene pool centers, their important locations, but in space time framework. That's important. Now. in this map you can observe all those examples of these cultivated plants across the world so you can draw this map and you can list these particular species for example if i take an example in this indian subcontinent what is this this is centers of origin of certain cultivated plants like rice millets sorghum pea mango kapok and jute if you go to this mediterranean region here you see barley oats grapes olives dates you know all those sugar beet leeks and asparagus lettuce all these things are coming from mediterranean so similarly what you can do is you can remember certain examples of particular species cultivated plants their centers of origin that what is coming from where right if somebody asks you where is strawberry coming from so you must remember strawberry is coming from this particular area here right in south america so that's important so like this some common species cultivated plant species which are utilized in daily activities in your everyday life you eat it right you consume it just try and figure out some of these examples from different regions and see where they actually came from right related with vavilov centers of origin or hearts of the centers that's important to remember right so at last let's understand about importance of this conservation or what you say preservation of gene pool first part is that you must remember it's talking about diversity conservation so more genetic diversity if you conserve it or preserve it and then each gene has a specific purpose a specific characteristic a trait like resistance to disease tolerance to harsh climate and so many things so a population with large genetic diversity has a better chance of coping with it right better chance of surviving the extremes of environment like for example in today's world we see immunity right 
immunity of people during pandemic it varies across the world some people are more immune some are less immune it's not just to do with what you are looking into the environment or what you are eating it's also about your gene pool genetic diversity that if you are able to see yourself through this pandemic it's not just because of your eating habits that you develop certain immunities it's also in genetic codes at the same time that's important to remember right so for better survival large genetic diversity or gene pool is important right on the other hand populations with lesser number of genes in their gene pool will be susceptible to such problems and they have a chances of extinction right so populations with large gene pool will have more chances of survival while those of small gene pools are in danger acquiring genetic disease deformities infertility and so many other points that's important here to remember then comes food and agriculture organizations estimate that says that about 71st 75% of crop genetic diversity was lost as farmers worldwide switched to genetically uniform high yielding varieties so on one hand we have to meet the food demand of people so what we do we use high yielding varieties we use hybrid varieties which are genetically uniform throughout the world and the world has been taken over by genetically uniform seeds what have we been losing at the same time the genetic diversity that is what food and agriculture organization estimates that's also important to remember as well at the same time right so having recourse to genetic material is however essential to adapt and improve agriculture in face of threats while remember it's also important that disease or climate change are also altering the growing conditions at the same time for example variety of a turkish wheat collected and stored in seed bank in 1948 was rediscovered in 1980s when it was found to carry genes resistant to many types of disease causing fungi so this is where it is important to conserve or what you said preserve that particular gene pool of species right so in medicine sector if you observe many medicines are obtained from plants and animal sources like neem oil quinine that is coming from chinchona trees and prevent malaria right that's why we see it's about resistance to diseases right so at last you can remember this particular statement that why we are studying about gene pool centers why we are concerned about its preservation it's because it is very much important for our sustainability for the sustainable development across the world right so that's important to remember and quote it so now when we have discussed in details the various aspects of gene pool centers their origin mapping and the scientists like vavilov and kendall in the sessions to come we'll be talking on other aspects of environmental geography that is important so stay tuned keep learning all my best wishes to you